Hi everyone, uh, so as promised a quick video of the uh, Tesla style head unit screen in a Bentley. This particular car is a 2007 Bentley GTC. Um, it's got the triple black interior. Uh, so the one that I ordered came with the uh, gloss black trim, which actually looks fairly standard, uh, fairly factory like. Um, it's Android based, uh, so what you see on the home screen is similar to any kind of Android head unit. Um, all the standard apps are on there and you can add anything from the uh, the Google Play Store as well. Um, one thing I've added to this is uh, an Apple CarPlay unit. Um, so I've set it as the default navigation app. When I go into that, I've got the usual CarPlay interface, so I've got music um, Google Maps and then the phone unit as well so back to the home screen um, what you'll see here is clock weather um, music radio so the radio app um, works as you'd expect all the standard radio options you'd expect are there um, music so there's two options for music on this device you can either play via bluetooth um, so you can connect your phone to the bluetooth of the head unit or it also has a, um, a slot for a memory card or a usb socket where you can put a usb stick into um, and those usb sockets are on fly leads so you can install the usb sockets in the glove box um, so they're easy to access um, so back to the home screen if I look at some of the other apps that are on here, so this is Autoplay, that's the um, Apple CarPlay app that I'm using. Video player, so the same again, you can um, put videos on the internal storage of the head unit or on a USB stick. Uh, music player we've just looked at. Um, the, two one, the two apps that people on here will be most interested in are settings and car info. So if I look at the settings tab... Uh, most of them are standard Android settings, um, so all your connectivity, display sound, GPS and the like. Uh, this one, uh, some car specific options, so brake wire for video in motion. If you want the video to be disabled while you're driving along, you can enable that option. Um, you can also set it to mute the audio when you're reversing. Uh, if you've got a reversing camera, you can mirror the image of that if that's how you like it. Um, also it can reduce the sound volume while you're reversing as well which is quite useful and something that the standard uh, head unit does as well. Um, steering wheel settings, so this is where uh, you can program the buttons on your steering wheel to operate the controls on the head unit. For me it all came set up ready to work uh, so I didn't need to use any of that. Navi app, this is where you set your default navigation app, so on the home screen when you push the large navi button it will take you straight to whatever app you set as default. Um, more settings here, this is a, a password protected developer type menu. Um, the password the seller gave me for this unit was 3368, but I'm not sure if that would be the same for everyone. So we'll have a look in there and confirm. So here you set the car model. Um, I'm assuming that this the same screen unit is used on multiple vehicles just with different fascias um, and what this option does it will set the CAN um, communication protocol uh, so depending on what manufacturer it is um, they'd have their own language on the CAN bus so this is just so it knows how to interpret those signals um, uh, what else is on here so your boot screen logo so I've got the standard Bentley logo um, but you can have others on there and you can upload them via USB stick. Um, some other options that I've not really played around with yet, but some of these are developer options such as USB protocol selection, for example. Um, if you have a TV unit, you can set the TV type in there. So next menu is your location and privacy Android settings. And then finally, some more developer options and your, your date and time settings. So that's the main head unit settings. The second app is Car Info. Now this is all the uh, options that replace what was on the standard head unit. 
So if I look at car info, um, mileage, engine speed, voltage, all that kind of stuff. So your trip um, since start. This doesn't quite work. So if you look, it says my average speed is 255 miles an hour. N not quite. Uh, never really got it that fast. Vehicle settings. Uh, here you've got your suspension level. Um, so if I had the ignition on, which I don't at the moment, um, this is where you change the height of the car and whether it's in uh, comfort or sport mode or anything in between. Tire pressure monitoring. So what I've discovered is this doesn't work with the factory tire pressure module or sensors. Uh, this is designed for aftermarket Bluetooth based tire pressure monitoring sensors um, that are compatible with Android head units. Uh, not really something I want to get into because if I want to swap the um, the car back to standard, I don't want to have to take all the tires off the rims and fit new sensors. Uh, so the test I'm going to do is go for a drive, let some air out of one of the tires and see if I get the standard tire um, flat tire alert on the instrument cluster. If I do, then I know the sensors in the module are still working and I know I'll still get an alert if I've got a flat tire and I'll live with that. I don't need to see it on the screen. Um, other settings, so you've got your wiper service location, uh, you know, metric or imperial settings, your alarm setting as well. So if you're going on a ferry, you can disable these. Um, I keep them all enabled though, because I'm not on a ferry. Uh, so all of those settings there. If I go back to uh, here, car CD, if you've still got the factory CD changer in the glove box, um, then that's where you can control it from. I don't. Before I had this unit, I had a um, iPod interface, so I disconnected the CD changer. Uh, other apps on here. Google, Google Maps as a built-in app. Um, equalizer for playing with your EQ. It looks horrendous at the moment. I still need to set that up. Um, Navi, this is the built-in navigation app. I've not used it, um, and actually it just goes back to my Apple CarPlay. Uh, I'm not even sure who the supplier of those maps are, or where they come from, or how often they're updated. Uh, YouTube, Play Store, Google Drive, uh, storing files. Google Drive is actually very useful if you need to get APKs onto the head unit. You can add them onto your, your Google Drive on your desktop. Um, and then Wi-Fi hotspot to the head unit and get them to download it. I've actually installed a 4G SIM in the head unit, so it's got full connectivity. You can see that up the top there. Um, so it's fully internet enabled. I can go straight onto YouTube and I could play a video on YouTube after the adverts have played, of course. So if I just skip this. So there we go. The quality is pretty good. Um, I can put it into full screen mode, but because the orientation of the screen is portrait and videos are um, landscape, you obviously won't get full full screen. So if I come back out of that, the other good thing about this unit is this small icon here. I can touch on that. I can then go to split screen. So I can have YouTube playing at the top and at the bottom, maybe I'll have uh, car info. No, this app does not support um, split screen, so maybe I'll go to YouTube at the top, take it out of full screen mode, go back into split screen, and down the bottom I will have, let's say, my equaliser. So I could have my music playing at the top and my EQ at the bottom and play with it at the same time. Uh, what else? So front video, you can have a um, USB dash cam connected and that will play through there. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, in terms of installation, if you can remove the factory head unit, you can install this. Uh, so this fascia clips on the top. Underneath that, you've got the screen which fixes with the four torque screws, two left and two right. And then the trim piece clips on with four clips at the bottom and a couple of clips up the top, I think. Um, installation start to finish. If you're not one of these people that, that worries about tying down every wire and making sure everything's rooted neatly and properly, you could do it start to finish in about 40 minutes. 
Um, me personally, I took some of the equipment out on the passenger side, so I took the glove box and, and this trim panel out so that I could mount the GPS antenna in a decent location and the um, antenna for the 4G. Uh, so that's all routed through there. And then the connectors are in the glove box as well, so I can get to those. Uh, in terms of sound quality, it's pretty good. Um, when the fact when the unit shipped and, and when it was first installed, the sound volume was very quiet. Uh, the RCA pre-outs from the head unit, the voltage is too low for what the amp needs in the car. So I ended up buying an aftermarket high level to RCA converter that was adjustable and, and powered so that I could set the volume that I wanted. Um, so now I've got something that's half decent. Apologies for the poor music, uh, but that's what you get. Um, Apple CarPlay is absolutely brilliant, so I can see everything I'd normally see on my phone, but this didn't come with the unit. This was an extra £35, I think, so maybe £45. Bucks. Um, you might be able to get them cheaper in the US, uh, but your usual apps on there as well, so I can tune in radio, I can make a Zoom call, uh, all of the usual stuff, or I can go back to the car screen from there as well. Um, I think that's it. Oh, sorry, one last thing, air conditioning. So down the bottom, you've got your AC controls, if I just zoom in. Uh, if I start the car actually to get them working. Move the lever out of the way. So what you've got now, if I pop this menu up, here's your AC controls. Uh, so you can speed it up with the buttons at the bottom. So you can hear that now kicking in. Uh, you can sync left and right, so that as you change the temperature on one side, it changes it on the other side as well. So you can see that's changed over there. Um, front and rear heated screens, uh, whether it comes out the face, the dash, by your feet, all that stuff's there or you can drop it back down again as well and it still retains the settings so on the convertibles uh, whatever setting you last had with the roof down that's what it will automatically go to the next time you put the roof down so it it remembers the settings from when the roof is up and when the roof is down it will automatically flick between the two um, that's it I can't think of anything else uh, I've covered what the head unit does in terms of the factory head unit function so you don't lose any of that functionality the AC works the install was simple um, so yeah I, I can't think of anything else but uh, feel free to comment on the video and I'll answer it there um, if there's enough questions then I'll make a follow-up video covering off those specific points um, but otherwise I hope this was helpful <laughs>